Shields. Welcome to my home and my studio. Uh, I'd like to invite you in so you can see the beautiful things that inspire me when I make my jewelry. Please come on. My studio is also my showroom. Um, I have a lot of private clients and they like to come and see what I do, how I do it, and of course I make custom necklaces designed for them. So I have a jewelry case filled with some of the kinds of work that I do. This beautiful coral piece, um, for example, this is a little black silk collar with pearls on wire wound up. Um, this is a piece of carved serpentine locks, Chinese locks. I was born in Japan and spent my childhood traveling all over the world. Um, my father worked for an oil company and uh, they sent us to so many countries I lost count, but every four years or so we'd pack up the whole household, get on a ship, and go to another country, stopping in between at other places before we got to the country of residence. This piece, a garden seat, Chinese garden seat, Famille Rose, was one of the things that I was most fascinated with when I was a little girl because I could crawl up to it and look at it closely and what had been kind of a pink blur resolved itself into leaves and birds and flowers and I just looked at all these decorative bands that went around it. I mean I would sit transfixed for hours just looking at the patterns on this thing maybe because it was the same level as my eyes but from a distance it was a blur of color, but when I got up close, I could see the patterns. And to this day, it's the patterns that really become the focus of my, of my creations. I have collected a lot of obis, and I use them in my jewelry. I also am inspired by the Japanese dolls. I've collected quite a few of these, and I'm really, really excited about the fabric. It, 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 it's magnificent. It's jewel-like. And I looked at the, this fabric and thought, I can make jewelry out of it. While I'm in the studio, I want to show you some more of the Silk Road pieces that I was talking about. I began to make them in kimono fabric, like little Japanese children wear. This is called Chiriman. It's a silk fabric and it's a pretty floral. These are lovely little summer necklaces. And as I said, they're very, very lightweight. I have sold many of these. People come back for more. Different colors, different pendants. Some of them are quite dramatic, but once again, they're very lightweight. This piece has an onyx Chinese lock, carved lock, in, in a lovely stone. And of course, the silk obi fabric, the white is the obi. This is an obi fabric in black and white. Some of them are more ethnic, where I've used um, pieces that uh, I've collected in my travels. This is a Pakistani brass button. I have these uh, findings made for me. I've designed them. Most of my jewelry has uh, original findings on it, so it keeps my brand looking like Gretchen. Here's one more variation on the Silk Road. A braided piece with a carved Chinese um, pendant on it ties around and then you have these pretty little strings to play with. Here's what happened to me. I saw a necklace that I liked and I realized it wasn't hard to make. So I went and I bought the beads. I made the necklace and uh, the rest is history. But uh, I think it was turquoise. Anyway, buying beads becomes addictive. This is my, some of my, some of my beads. Um, these are watermelon trade beads, African trade beads. This is amber. Um, these are beads from Kenya. Uh, oh my goodness, here. Where, where else have we been? These are Chinese. I have these wonderful little inros, little boxes from Japan that can be part of a necklace. And um, I just go to shows and I buy beads and I have um, traders that come to me, uh, traders from Tibet that come to me and bring me their beautiful silver and, and uh, coral laden pieces. This is how I work. I get inspired by color or shape um, and I pull all of the things out that go with it and put them in these little black boxes and assemble uh, the beginnings of a necklace. This is for one of my customers. She, she is looking forward to wearing this. But you can see it's not strung yet, it's just laid out. If I hold it like this perhaps you can see better. This is one for the same customer 
that I've actually strung. Um, it's waiting to have its, its class put on it. And um, it is amethyst and pearls. I do a particular sort of clasp that's become my trademark. Um, it's very elegant and it's quite different from the plain metal clasp. I like the back of the necklace to look every bit as gorgeous as the front. So I do a button and loop clasp closure um, with macrame, which I love to do. This is an example of it. This is adjustable with three buttons on macrame string and a loop, and the buttons go through the loop. And there you have the back of your necklace. It's quite lovely and um, very, very interesting and unusual. If you are this person who is interested in becoming one of my collectors, here's what I can do for you. I can ask you what you want, what kind of things you like, and then I send you a pick box. And this is like getting Christmas because I include three or four necklaces with matching earrings. And you like them, you keep one, you send the rest back. You like two, you keep the rest back. I just did this for somebody uh, who had bought a necklace from me. And when I delivered the necklace, I included another one, a beautiful, beautiful one that I knew she'd like, and a present of a pair of earrings. And she sent me this, this wonderful note about how did I possibly think she could send it back to me. Of course she wanted to keep it. And um, the personal touch is important to me in reaching out to these clients. I want them to know me and what I am about, what surrounds me. And I want them to see that in the jewelry. I want them to have that conveyed by the jewelry and to borrow some of it to, for themselves. Feel the creativity all around you. Experience it. Love it. Look at the world. Enjoy. You have a wonderful day.